Good evening, everyone. I, sh I shall be moderating the breast thoracic case session. Um, may I please invite Dr. Virendra, uh, Assistant Professor, Department of Thoracic Surgery at Tata Memorial Hospital, and Dr. Nivedita. Uh, she is also also an Assistant Professor in the Department of Radiology at Tata Memorial. Uh, we have a few submissions from uh, budding radiologists. So may I please invite Dr. Mansi to present her case. So good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Mansi from Tata Memorial Hospital, and I'd like to discuss a case where we discuss the midline trapezoidal tumors. A 40-year-old female came with chronic cough and breathlessness. Uh, she developed strider, where she presented to the uh, image. Uh, a contrast and CD thorax was done, which revealed a mid-tracheal growth, uh, three centimeter proximal to the carina, which abutted the anterior esophageal wall with no infiltrations. Uh, there was no associated mediastinal adenopathy or supracavicular adenopathy. Uh, at this point, we would like to give some differentials. So any volunteers from the audience? So, um, the differentials we thought were uh, some uh, malignant tumors like uh, adenoid cystic tumors, arsenoid tumor, or squamous cell carcinoma of the trachea. And uh, there may be some benign tumors also like hamartoma or uh, myo leomyoma of the trachea. Then a PET CT was done, which revealed. Uh, high uptake in the trachea. SUV max was 11,091. Uh, so we narrowed it down to two differentials at this point of time, which were uh, adenoid cystic, uh, squamous cell carcinoma, and uh, mucoepidermoid tumor. But as uh, mucoepidermoid and carcinoid show low FDG uptake, squamous cell carcinoma has high FDG uptake. So only one differential was uh, there, that is squamous cell carcinoma. Then the patient underwent uh, multiple hypoxic episodes. So she underwent a uh, fiber optic biopsy, where which revealed poor differentiated squamous cell carcinoma. On IHC, the tumor was positive for P40 and NUT. Uh, the patient underwent debulking surgery outside. A uh, patient received uh, RT and uh, chemotherapy with concurrent paclitaxel and carboplatin. And uh, after that, R1 resection was done and uh, the patient underwent tracheal dilatation and stenting multiple times. Silicone stent was uh, put. So NUT carcinomas, formerly known as NUT midline carcinomas, 
are a rare and very aggressive form of cancers uh, in the body and occur in the midline structures. It occurs all over the world in adults and children and both sexes. There is no... Uh, NUD carcinoma is undifferentiated and poorly differentiated squamous cell carcinoma. And uh, it normally lines the hollow organs in the body, such as the respiratory tract. Uh, it is characterized by the rearrangement and translocation of NUTM1 gene, and there is translocation of the uh, chromosomes uh, 15 and 19. NUT on chromosome 15 is translocated to BRD4 on chromosome 19, forming a BRD4 NUT fusion oncoprotein, which causes activation of MYC, causing uncontrollable growth of the squamous. Uh, cells in the midline structures of the body. Uh, on CT, NUT midline carcinoma typically appears as a hypoattenuating heterogeneously enhancing infiltrative mass with poorly defined margins uh, and has the propensity to invade adjacent structures including the heart, pericardium, esophagus, central airways and vessels. Uh, investigation of choice is PET-CT which shows intense FDG uptake with high SUV. Uh, and final diagnosis by biopsy, HPR, and IC evaluation. Uh, so these are uh, various differentials. So primary malignant tumors of the respiratory tract are surface epithelium. Uh, we have squamous cell carcinoma, neuroectodermal tumors, neuroendocrine tumors, adenocarcinoma, salivary gland tumors like adenocystic CA, mucoepidermoid, uh, then mesenchymal tumors like sarcoma lymphoma. So these are the pictures. Uh, squamous cell carcinoma is an ill-defined growth, which comes, which is sessile and comes from the uh, squamous cells of the trachea. It shows intense FDG uptake. Uh, neuroendocrine tumor also occurs uh, from the neuroendocrine cells. Uh, and uh, it shows low FDG uptake. Basically, all the tracheobronchial tumors are differentiated on the basis of PET scan. And there are also benign conditions like which arise from the epithelium, like squamous cell papilloma, papillomatosis, salivary gland tumors like pleomorphic adenoma, gland adenoma, oncocytoma, and mesenchymal tumors like hematoma, leomyoma. Yeah. She had the disease. Um, silicon stent has uh, less. Uh, she had severe strider, so stenting was done. Yeah, she underwent serial dilatation before the stenting was done. Yes, yes. Dr. Unnati from Tata Memorial Hospital. Good evening, everyone. Uh, myself, Dr. Nati Chokse from Tata Memorial Center. Uh, today, we'll be discussing a case report of a rare mediastinal mass and uh, how uh, did we arrive at the diagnosis. 
So uh, our patient was a 21 year old male uh, from Bangladesh and he presented with fever, persistent, uh, persistent productive cough and breathlessness, uh, which was more on uh, lying supine. So uh, on imaging, uh, we had uh, this image of the CT scan, which uh, showed a homogeneous uh, mass uh, occupying the anterior mediastinum uh, with uh, lobulated margins. And uh, it was uh, more of ho homogeneous and uh, it was non evident on PET, PET scan. And uh, when the patient arrived at our center, he already had uh, undergone a biopsy at his uh, native place, uh, which were, was suggestive of a thymoma or a uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, this uh, biopsy was uh, reviewed at our center and uh, there were no malignant cells found uh, at our center for this biopsy. So uh, next, uh, the so this was a discordant uh, case. Uh, the imaging features at a center was not uh, in concordance with the pre uh, previous biopsy uh, which he underwent in Bangladesh. So next, uh, we uh, to better characterize the lesion, uh, we uh, did a MRI for this patient, and the lesion was uh, very extensive in nature. And uh, it was uh, T1 uh, hypointense and it did not enhance. Uh, and uh, it was T2 hyperintense on imaging. And uh, the M MRI was done, which showed T2 hyperintense in extensive anterior mediastinal mass with no internal post contrast enhancement. And uh, uh, it had extensive, it was extensive disease extending into the uh, neck uh, spaces. So thereafter, um, actually, we went for a repeat biopsy at our institute, uh, which revealed it to be a thymic cyst. But uh, after the biopsy, the uh, patient had a, developed a complication. There was a new onset pericardial effusion in this patient, and uh, which was drained and found to be uh, chylus in nature. So next, uh, uh, we, uh, we suspected a lymphovenous malformation. Uh, because of the extent of this uh, lesion and the uh, persistent uh, development of pericardial uh, chylus effusion after the biopsy. So uh, we uh, doubted the uh, diagnosis of uh, thymic cyst and then the intranodal lymphangiography was done which uh, showed the communication between the mediastinal mass and the thoracic duct. So uh, uh, subsequently, thoracic duct cannulation was done and the uh, angiogram was done, which demonstrated the communication between the mass and the thoracic duct. Uh, this uh, was uh, uh, later completely embolized. Uh, the thoracic duct was uh, embolized using 33% glue. And then there were subsequent two settings for sclerotherapy uh, with bleomycin of the thoracic duct. The patient uh, improved in condition after these uh, uh, treatment procedures and uh, he was later discharged and is now in follow-up. So uh, the teaching points in this case are uh, that lymphangiomas are uh, rare benign tumors which can present as large mediastinal masses. And when a lymphangioma is suspected, a MRI should be included in the early set of investigations uh, because it uh, it better characterizes uh, lymphangiomas. Uh, they appear T2 bright, uh, T2 hyper intense, and uh, they don't show any enhancement. Uh, MRI, along with other clinical features, is of paramount importance in ruling out the differentials and coming to a diagnosis. Uh, in spite of a negative biopsy result, sometimes uh, these lymphangiomas can lead to a negative biopsy result, and. Uh, in case of suspected venal lymphatic communication, a lymphangiogram uh, should be done to confirm the location. And uh, glue embolization and uh, sclerotherapy uh, procedures in uh, intervention radiology uh, yield excellent results in such cases. Thank you. No, that is fine. Uh, so this was a uh, lymphangioma actually, but it was not uh, proven on HPR. Actually, we had a different diagnosis of thymexis. So MRI was more of benefit. Thank you.
Next is Dr. Tanvi Shinde from Cyan Hospital. I'm Dr. Tanvi, third year resident from Cyan Hospital. Today, I will be presenting a very simple yet interesting case in front of all of you. So uh, recently, on 5th of July, we had a patient, 63-year-old, who presented to us with main complaint as a headache. He was having headache since last four months, which was unbearable since last 15 days. On further evaluation, there was no other complaints, no other neurological signs and symptoms, or any other systemic illness. Patient was a non-alcoholic and non-smoker. So patient was admitted under medicine and then as a first investigation, CT brain was performed on same day, that is on 5th of July. So these are plain CT images. Here we can see multiple hyperdense lesions, which are well-defined with surrounding hypodensity, likely vasogenic edema. And these lesions are found in uh, mainly at gray white matter junction like they were at the frontal region as well as in cerebellar vermis and in left parietal and temporal region. So to further characterize lesions, we went ahead with contrast CT. So on contrast CT, these lesions show vivid en enhancement with few hypodense areas which were non-enhancing mainly at the center of these lesions. So on the basis of these characteristics, a diagnosis of metastasis was established. As these lesions were hyperdense on plane scan as well, we suspected it to be an hemorrhagic mix. Now, as patient absolutely did not have any systemic symptoms, we went ahead uh, to search for the primary and we advised some basic investigations like chest X-ray, USG abdomen and so on. So very first investigation was, which, was, which was done immediately on 7th of July was chest X-ray. And we got a surprising picture after that because this is a frontal chest radiogram of the same patient, which, which is showing a, re a, well, a relatively well-defined radiopacity in the right perihilar region. A uh, mild elevation of right dome of diaphragm is also noted, and it is actually obliterating right heart border. So as this was highly suspicious of malignancy, we went ahead with contrast enhanced chest, chest CT on very next day, that is on 8th of July. So these are some CT images which I have plain as well as contrast images. So here we can see a speculated margin soft tissue density lesion, mainly in the right perihilar region. It is involving anterior segment of right upper lobe as well as right middle lobe. It is showing heterogeneous enhancement with few hypodense areas which are noted within, which are non-enhancing. Now these are some arterial phase images. In first image here, we can see pulmonary artery and um, the tumor is seen invading into it with non-opacification of its branches, which is actually suggestive of tumor thrombosis. Then here in this picture also, again, we can see pulmonary artery and there is actually non-visualization of non-opacification of its branches. Then in this image, we can see some small vessels which are actually arising from descending outer and they are traversing uh, in right pre-tracheal and paratracheal region to reach this uh, right pulmonary artery. These are actually mapcas and these are formed because of severe obliteration of pulmonary artery. Now I have some more contrast phase images. Here in this first image, um, you can see a superior pulmonary vein, which is draining into right atrium. So um, the tumor is seen invading into the superior pulmonary vein, which again suggested a tumor thrombosis. 
Then in this images, we can see SVC and the lesion is seen encasing the proximal uh, segment of SVC till it's uh, uh, opening into right atrium. SVC is severely narrowed, but we can see contrast opacification. These are some lung window images. So this is a main lesion and a surrounding uh, uh, lung parenchyma shows interlobular septal thickening, which is somewhat nodular and it has few ground glass opacities. So these features are actually suggested that the tumor is now invaded into lymphatics. That is, um, as we call it as uh, car uh, lymphangitis carcinomatosis. On further evaluation and on further screening of lung parenchyma, we found a pleural tag with a heterogeneously enhancing satellite module, which was in the lower lobe. The main lesion was seen at, in the upper and predominantly in the middle lobe. So this lesion was in an altogether different lobe from primary lesion and it had a feeding vessel to it. So it suggested that it is a type of pul uh, uh, metastatic pulmonary nodule, which is synchronous with the primary. These are some virtual bronchoscopy images. So first image is taken at the point of carina, where you can see carina and right and left main bronchus. Then we went ahead into the right main bronchus and this, this so smooth margin lesion you can see, which is obliterating the bronchus. So overall, the diagnosis was of bronchogenic CA. But this patient had some other features with it. That is, he had tumor thrombosis invading into RP, right pulmonary artery and right superior pulmonary vein, as well as the patient had lymphangitis carcinomatosis. And he also had a metastatic uh, parenchymal nodule. To confirm diagnosis, we referred this patient to respiratory medicine department, who performed bronchoscopy-assisted um, uh, biopsy for this patient. And histology reports were suggestive of squamous cell carcinoma. To complete the study and to confirm our hemorrhagic meds diagnosis, which we gave on CT, we went ahead with uh, brain MR. And these are some brain MR images. On flare, these lesions were iso-intense with surrounding hyper-intense uh, vasogenic edema. These lesions, they showed a uh, restriction diffusion with corresponding low ADC. On contrast MRI, they were again vividly enhancing and few lesions also showed non-enhancing hypo-intensities within the uh, surprising thing was on FFE images, these lesions were not having any kind of blooming. So this diagnosis of brain metastasis was confirmed, but they were not hemorrhagic meds. Now bronchogenic CA is not very uncommon. We see it often be, but this case was different because there was a glitch, diagnostic glitch to it. Um, this patient, in spite of having so much extensive spread into the ma major mediastinal vessels, as well as uh, he was having lymphangitis, carcinomatosis, and metastatic pulmonary nodule, he absolutely had no si just signs and symptoms. In fact, he presented with the uh, neurological symptoms, and clinicians thought it to be an SAH, so primarily br uh, CT brain was performed. So this case was a different case and we needed an intensive hunt for it. But just because of a basic investigation like chest x-ray, we got an immediate hit and we reached to the diagnosis in less than one week time. So that's it. Thank you. Respected judges will uh, select the best case. Uh, they will select it based upon how, how good the case was, how interesting it was, and how well it was presented. The winner will be emailed, uh, will be notified through email. Now with the panel discussion.